Before we're done with the techniques for this project, there is one last piece of UI kit joy we need to tackle. When we select a picture, we're gonna get back one of these UI image things here. But when we're done filtering it somehow, we need a way to save that back to the user's photo library. And this uses a UI kit function with a very precise name, UI image right to saved photos album. In its simplest form, honestly, it's trivial to use, but in order to make it work usefully, make it work well with SwiftUI, you've got to wade back into UIKit. At least, trust me, this will make you really appreciate how nice SwiftUI is afterwards, after this UIKit trial by fire. Anyway, before we write any code, we've got to do something new. We've got to add a configuration option for our project. Now, every project we build, Everyone so far, including this one here, has a whole bunch of these options baked right in, describing things like uh, which interface orientations we wanna have, portrait, landscape, upside down, or who knows what, um, the version number, what icons you want to have, and kind of baked in things like that. This is not code. These options live elsewhere in our project, so the system can read them without having to run our app. And these will live in a particular place in Xcode, which is, quite frankly, bafflingly hard to find for no good reason. I have no idea why. But I'll show you where it is here. You want to go ahead and select InstaFilter from the Project Navigator, not the group, the top one with the sort of App Store icon next to it, because you click the App Store, obviously. Then you want to look for Project InstaFilter and Target InstaFilter and choose the Targets InstaFilter one, this one right here. Now, if you don't see that, you might have a hidden like this, in which case you've got to choose Targets InstaFilter, like that. When that's done, you want to go across this Info tab over here. Now, there are a bunch of options you need to add into here to control the way your app works. You can see here there is supported interface orientations for iPhone and down here for iPad. And da -da -da -da. Mostly, you don't mess around with these too much, but here we have to. So there's a whole bunch of options in here, and there's one specific option we've got to add, which is writing to the photo library. That's a protected operation. You can't just write photos to the library because that'd be well, hideous. You can imagine what it does. And so we've got to tell the user ahead of time why we'd like to write to their photo album. And this is done by adding a permission string in here, what we want to do, a short string telling iOS what alert to show. And it'll show the alert, handle OK or cancel, handle writing the permission out, handle doing all that job for us. All we're gonna do is provide a string here saying why we want to do that. And there is no way of doing it obviously here. It's brilliant, terrible UI design from Apple here. What you gotta do is go over one of these decent items and then right click and choose add row, obviously. Um, and a new row will appear here and you wanna scroll down and look for a particular thing. There's quite a few of these to work through. We're looking for privacy here. You'll see, blah, 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 blah. privacy, photo library additions usage description. That's the exact one you want. Please choose that one now. And then over here in the value side, you want to describe to iOS what the actual thing you need is and, and why. This will be shown to the user word for word, so make it useful. You might say, uh, we want to save your filtered Photo, for example. Something that makes them want to go, oh yeah, that's what I want, boom. We're gonna show this at the right time, right? You know, when we ask to write the photo, they've pressed save, it'll show this alert the first time. If they press yes, it won't show it again, it'll just do it silently. Um, but it's not like it immediately run the app and show the alert, it's only done at the right time. And with that tiny change now, we can go ahead and call this long UI image write to save photos album method, or function, sorry. And that writes a picture of our choosing, a UI image of our choosing out to their photo library. Now we already have load image like this inside our little uh, content view here. And we could make that write the thing as soon as it's chosen, right? We could just say uh, uh, UI image write to save photos album, badoom. Give this thing an input image, which is our input image. And then for all the other parameters, write nil, 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 and that's it. Now, every time you import a picture, it'll save it back to the photo library. Um, the first time you try it, it will show a prompt saying, 
hey, um, we want to save your photo, uh, filtered photo. Do you want to allow it or not? Um, that's in your information. Uh, we just added the options back there. But that is actually just the beginning because you might look at that and say, wow, that was really easy. Um, but it's easy because we did the least possible work, right? This isn't useful. You don't want to save the thing you just loaded. That makes no sense. Um, we've given the input image and said nil, nil, nil for the rest of it. To do better than this, we've got to really dig into what's actually happening here because these nil parameters matter, or at least these first two do. Um, they tell Swift what method should be called when the saving completes. And it'll then turn us, tell us whether it succeeded or failed. You know, did it work or not? Did they, did they disallow our permission request, for example? If you don't care, fine, nil, nil. Just a try and save, didn't work, pfft, doesn't matter. Don't show an alert, don't show an error, it's done. But um, remember, users can press deny to photo access permission. They can say, no, I don't trust this application. I know I pressed save, but no, disallow saving now. It's a good idea to catch that error, right? Just to make sure it, is, it makes your app look like it's working properly. Cunningly, the reason it takes two parameters to know which function to call is because this is old code. I mean, this is old code. Um, I, I, perhaps it'll even tell you how old it is. Um, does it even tell you? No, it's, it's that old. It's around about 3.1, right? That's how old we're looking at here, right? It's probably even older than that. This is old <laughs> UI kit code, right? Way older than Swift. In fact, so old, it even predates Objective-C's version of closures called blocks. And so instead, this uses a whole different way of saying, please call this function. Um, and it's it's a uniquely Objective-C-ish, sadly. Um, in place of this first nil right here, we want to point to an object an object that will handle the method. And the second one, we pass the name of the method that's recalled on the first one. So we'll say, call this thing, and call the method that on this thing. Um, and if, if, if that sounds bad, I'm afraid you only know half the story, because both of those parameters have their own complexities, because Objective-C, um, the object we provide, this first nil here, must be a class, and it must inherit from NS object. This means we cannot point to our current SwiftUI view struct. It will not work. And the method is provided as a method name. Like the name, the string text name of the method, not an actual function like we do with closures normally. And this was used by Objective-C to find the actual code at runtime, which would then be run. And this has to have a very specific method signature, the parameters, otherwise the code just won't work. But wait, there's more. Um, for performance reasons, Swift prefers not to generate code that Objective-C can read, right? That whole look at methods to run at runtime is slow, right? That thing was really clever, but really slow. And so when it comes to writing the method name, we've got to do two extra things. We've got to first use a special um, compiler directive here called hash selector, which asks Swift, to make sure that method name actually exists the way say it exists. Otherwise, it'd be like, nah, trust me, it'll be there. Not good enough for Swift, it wants to be sure. And second, we're gonna add an, a special attribute, at obj-c, O-B-J-C, to the method, which tells Swift to generate code that can be read by the older Objective-C runtime. I wrote UI kit for over a decade before I switched to Swift UI, and honestly, just saying this explanation makes this old API seem like a crime against humanity. Sadly, it is what it is, and we're just stuck with it. This is how you do the code, right? Before I show you the code, just briefly, I want to mention this fourth parameter. We're not going to be using it here. Um, this first one is the image to save here. The second one is the object that should be notified about the save finishing. Third one is the method on the object that should be run. And the fourth one here, again, not using it here, but I want you to be at least be aware of what it does. We can provide basically anything here. And it'll be passed back when this method is called on this object. Um, this is what UIKit calls context, and it helps you identify one image save from another image save. You might say the ID would go in here, for example, in dictionary or whatever, who knows what. Um, you can literally provide whatever you want here. So UIKit uses the most 
hands-off type you can imagine, literally a raw chunk of memory. If you look at the UI image right thing, you'll see it is, um, it is just an unsafe, mutable, raw pointer. Just, just, just some memory. Here you go. What do you want to do with this then? Um, <laughs> it's, honestly, if it wasn't for the fact that it wasn't used here, I wouldn't even tell you it existed. Um, I just know folks would be curious what the fourth nil is. So there you go. It's just not useful at this point in your app development career. Anyway, that's more than enough talk. Back to inner peace. It's before you decide to throw this project away and burn your computer, um, let's get this over and done with. As I've said, to write an image to the library and read the response, did it work or not? We need some kind of class that inherits from NS object, and inside there, we're gonna add a method with a particular signature, exact uh, format of parameters coming in that's marked with the at object C, which we then call from UI image right to saved photos album. Okay. Make a new Swift file. We're gonna wrap up this filth in one isolated part of our code. Uh, call it uh, Swift files, fine. Call it image saver. And inside here, add an import for UI kit. And then say, Class image saver inherits from NS object. And this is going to do the work of writing an object for us, writing an image to the library. So we'll say func write to photo album takes an image, UI image. Inside there, we're going to call write to save photos album. But remember, that's got to call a completion function when it's done. So below here, we're gonna write that completion function first. And it's got an exact name, I apologize, exact style, just what it is, okay? We're gonna say, at obj c, this thing is available to the older, slower Objective-C runtime. Funk, save error, or save completed, or let's save completed, it says, isn't it? Completed. With an image, oops, with an, come on, underscore, with an image, UI image, so which image was written, then it's called did finish saving with error, an error, optional error, and context info, and that's our unsafe raw pointer that comes in. And I'll just print save finish. So that's the completion function available to Objective-C runtimes so it can be called. We're going to use that inside right to photo album. So we'll say UI image write to saved photos album. Whatever image we were passed, the target who to tell when it's finished is self. Tell us, that's where it'll call our method. Then we want to say the, the selector to call is hash selector. Look this up, please. And it's called save completed, like that. Find that thing down there and call it. Context will be nil. There is no context. Whew. That is the horror out of the way. You can leave that file now and never come back to it again. So now uh, we can go ahead and remove this always save when it's loaded kind of thing here. And instead, we can add a button. We can say up here something like button save image. And here, We'll first make sure we have an image to save. That's this guard line right here. And we'll say, let image saver be a new image saver. Image saver dot write to photo album that input image. So write it out. And all being well, that should work. Let's press Command R now and see if I've managed to uh, screw up my exactly named Objective C methods. I'll press select image. I will choose this nice sort of waterfall-y thing and then press save image. Boom, that's the alert from iOS, that's our message. I'll choose okay to allow it and all being well, down here, uh oh, there's no output. Oh wait, hiding that thing there, phew, phew. Save finished, it worked, it worked fine. <laughs> so, honestly, I'll show you just briefly, brace yourself. That's all the code we actually need. And I know I spent a good old while explaining hardly any code at all. 
But on the bright side, that completes the overview for this project. That's all the techniques you gotta know now. So we can now get into the actual implementation. So please go ahead and put most of your project back to its original state. That means zapping all this state stuff up here, get rid of the V stack. What I don't want you to do is remove our two helper class uh, structs, image saver and image picker, sorry, these two things here, class here and a struct up here. Don't delete those two, they're important. But content view, reset, you know, text, hello world, whatever, as it is the default sort of uh, project with some padding, fine. Put that back to normal, but please, please, please leave image picker and leave image saver alone. Uh, otherwise, you have to remake them again in the future. They're gonna be used in this project, and again, they're really useful to have in your other projects too.